Praise the Lord. Good morning. I want to remind everybody that for open arms, we have these bottles that were given to you on Mother's Day. On Father's Day, we want you to have them back. You know when Father's Day is? You know when Father's Day is? It's next Sunday. <laughs> Some people are going, Saturday. No, Sunday. So, we want you to bring all the bottles back anywhere between now and next Sunday. Bring them back. Give them to Adela. <clears throat> we hope to have 100 bottles, okay, full of change. And so just feel free to, to give it to Adela. But make sure that we get them back because Open Arms really depends on these for, the, for their budget, okay? We want to help everybody that we can help in, in our uh, community, all right? Okay? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Um, we have uh, Doug Fry's memorial service is going to be Saturday at 1 o'clock. So for those that, that would like to come to that, we would love to see you and remember our, our brother that went here for quite a while. Is that correct? <laughs> oh, you didn't have anything to say. Oh, you were talking in the middle of service. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay, go ahead. Praise the Lord. Isn't Adela one of the sweetest people in the world, you guys? We are so blessed to have her as our secretary. So she takes care of a lot of stuff. So when you get a chance, just give her a great big hug and just tell her thank you so much for being our secretary here at the church. So amen. If there is a women's thing coming up, which there is, okay, who's given the announcement on the women's retreat? What? Oh, that was it. Well, I heard you say this the last time to sign up, but I thought somebody was going to talk about it. But you're good. Do we need to? That's it? No. That was really good. <laughs> Hey, that was five seconds ago. That's in the past. <laughs> Anybody else like that? Raise your hand if you're like that. How many remember what you had? How many in here remember what you had for breakfast yesterday? <laughs> Outside of this morning, I don't remember ever having breakfast. <laughs> I tell you. God has been so fantastic um, to all of us in here. We owe him our lives. We owe him our lives. And I have never seen, the, again, and I'll keep repeating this through Matthew 24, I have never, never seen or experienced the United States um, in the way that I'm experiencing it right now. We went down for a caucus really fast. Ron Mendive and I drove down at 2 o'clock in the morning to Boise for a caucus. We came back that same day, and I'm telling you what is happening down there. It, it, it's, it's absolutely incredible. The fight, the arguments, people think that we can accomplish something, but right now we can't accomplish anything, absolutely anything. And the powers that be are, are coming so strong and so hard that everything's being flipped upside down. And I'll tell you what, this is what we need to go after. You ready for this? Because we're going to have a testimony now. We need to go after souls. Because without Jesus, they don't know. There's this great delusion that's going on. People have no idea what economy even is about anymore. 
Young people in America know nothing about economy. They know nothing about how it runs. They know nothing seriously about the civil government. They know nothing. And so all of a sudden now we have all these people dying off, all these ones coming up. Oh, boy, I could talk forever on this subject, you guys. Souls are important. Loving people is important while we can. Loving people. Wrapping your arms around somebody. Being a father to the fatherless. The older people that are in here, and we got a bunch of them. Wouldn't it be nice if we all just adopted a kid? Outside, just tell a parent, listen, one is somebody in the church. Don't just walk up and say, hey, I want to take your kid for a day. <laughs> but when you get to know them, say, I would like to take, take him out and just take him fishing. I would like to, just one time a month, just go out with your son and just go fishing with him, just to enjoy some time with him. If we don't, can you understand what's happening to our children today? Bob's here again. God bless you, Bob. I love you, man. You're a great man. He's been in health and welfare all of his life, as far as I know, <laughs> pretty much. He's seen children when they're like this. He's seen them when they grow up. He knows the problems that we have because there's no Jesus in their life. Without Jesus, there's no chance today. People are being deceived. And we're going to have a testimony. And I'm going to have Royce come up and introduce um, somebody that's coming out of their house right now and out of the program. That her life was a mess and God decided to pluck her out. And so I want you to welcome uh, May and Royce, and they're going to make an introduction. And if you'll look at 801 Best right over there, he has been working his tail off over there, Royce has, by himself pretty much. And he has taken the building down, if you haven't noticed. He has, he's compacting everything and so we can do asphalt. And so we're going to have a parking lot over there before you know it. But it's really thank you to the men's groups that normally sit over here that went in there, removed everything out. And this dear man, him and Dave, that have pretty much tackled this whole thing by themselves. I want to thank you personally, you and May both, for everything that you do. You do it quietly. You do it humbly. And you don't whine, gripe, bellyache about anything. And you have a right to do that because I've watched you over there and nobody show up to help you. So, Royce, thank you very much. When we're, thank you. Thank Dave. When we're older, we always look at our children and, man, I wish they would have got it when they were younger. Yep. We have this amazing, miraculous transformation that has happened in our house with someone that had their birthday in our house. <laughs> to turn 20 years old, to come to Christ Yay. completely. I will let her give her testimony. Come on, girl. Absolutely amazing to have a child come to Christ in their youth. So beautiful. Amen. Thank you so much for obedience, Courtney. Would you bring your family up <laughs> and all the friends that have supported her? <laughs> Praise the Lord. I'm proud of you, girl. I really am. And your uncle. Yeah. <laughs> I'd like to open in prayer. Thank you, Jesus. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for this transformation that you've done in my life. I just pray that you use me as an open vessel today to... Let my testimony touch at least one person in this room today. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. So I have an amazing support group behind me and my family. I have my mom right here, my uncle Gary, my grandma, my sister, my nephew, and my dad. And they have supported me through the past five years of my addiction and have never given up on me. Amen. When I came to this program, well, before I came to the program, I was full of anger and couldn't just stay sober. I couldn't get it. The least I could do was finish school late, and that's about all I've done. 
So when my mom and my uncle approached me with the idea of coming to this program, I was like, sure, you know, like I was so desperate for something to just work. It is not easy to ask for help, especially when this is your third rehab in a year. There's no means my idea of what I wanted in my life at this point, but it happened. And when I got to the ranch, I definitely was not staying. I was out of this place. I could not believe my mom ever would send me to this place. I'm like, I need out of here. Like, I not like any of these people and I will never be like any of them. But here I am and I've made it. <laughs> I've definitely made it. How could you not like me? <laughs> I've always liked you, Pastor. <laughs> I never knew the Lord before, and so when I started opening the Bible and really learning about him, it was crazy how targeted I felt. I'm like, what's really going on here? Like, how do you know all this about me? <laughs> and then I realized it's not about me. And that's kind of what I centered my life around the past five years. I wanted everything to be about me, and if you loved me and you cared about me, I was going to hurt you because I just was. I didn't want help. Even though a little part of me did, I just ran. I think from a young age, I learned to run from my problems and just never stopped running. But when I went to jail, there came a point where I was tired of running. And I called my dad and I said, look, I'm not asking you to bail me out. I'm asking you for help for help from where I'm at today. And ever since then, he's really helped me. And I just love you. My mom always used to ask me, what's it going to take? You know, she's always willing to do everything for me. And same with my sister. They have never given up on me, which I would have labeled me a lost cause by now. And they didn't. They have fought tooth and nail for me and have given me every opportunity to try to get me sober. And I never found the courage to, or the strength to look at my mom and say, you know what? I think it's going to take me dying to get me to stop. And... It hasn't. I'm here today, and I'm alive. And I just thank you for this, Mom and Sierra, and I'm sorry. And Pastor, I love this program, and I'm thankful for it, but I hope I never have to come back. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you don't have to come back either. So I want to close today in Psalms 23, because this has really touched my heart the whole time I've been in the program. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still water. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. For though I walk through the spirit of the shadows of death, I will not feel fear evil. And I just want to thank everybody for standing by my side and seeing something in me when I see nothing in myself. I had no self-identity and no self-worth and really no point in even trying to go on and that's all been restored and now I see the light at the end of the tunnel so thank you <laughs> Bless you. praise the Lord again I want to thank uh, uh, this is the second one of this family that's been through our program and uh, I want to thank God for the ones that are praying and mom and dad and family and even sisters who just want to sometimes probably claw your eyes out when you're, when you're doing this type of crazy stuff. <clears throat> I really thank you for praying. And God honors prayer. He really does. And sometimes, I just mentioned uh, during worship, it's crying out. And sometimes to be able to cry out means there has to be a desperate situation. And when the desperate situation comes in, then we cry out. And you cried out this time versus... I just want to get out of jail, or I just want to, when you call upon the name of the Lord, he says, you'll be saved. All you have to do is truly, truly from your heart, call in the name of the Lord, and he shows up to your defense. And you did, he showed up, your family's here, you have all the support in the world, and you're a beautiful person. So God bless you, Courtney. Come on up here, we're going to pray for you. Congregation, if you'll stand. Come on, family, gather around her. Don't be scared. She bites, but don't be too scared. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. 
Thank you for Courtney. Thank you, Lord God, for her life. Thank you for her family. Thank you, Lord God, for her salvation, that her name has been written in the book of life. Lord, one of the greatest miracles in the world isn't the, uh, the blind to see. It's not for the lame to walk. It's for a heart to be changed from this world into the kingdom of God. It's for a heart of flesh, Lord God, that was in the world. Now, Lord God, it's completely turned around. Now it's all about love. Thank you, Lord God, for this turnaround. Thank you, Lord God, for this conversion. I pray, Lord God, that you'll jump right into ministry. Mm -hmm. Start talking to people. Start telling people about how good God is. So bless her, Lord God, and bless her whole family. And we ask, Lord God, that you anoint her, Lord God. Not just send her out there amongst the wolves, Lord, but anoint her to stand and do all to stand. Mm -hmm. Because this world is going to jump on her like crazy. But you have clothed her with the armor of Christ. So let that, Lord God, be sufficient. May your grace be sufficient in this time of her life, Lord God. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. I love you, girl. Thank you, Pastor. I love you, man. Thank you. Um, also, I want to, how many have done their spring cleaning already? The sun's about to come out, okay, the end of the week. Okay, how many still have spring cleaning to do? Okay, wow, a lot of people. When you do your spring cleaning, a lot of times that's where we toss stuff out, we go get new stuff or, or whatever. Okay, I want, uh, Nancy, would you stand just, just briefly? Okay, that's Nancy. N Nancy runs the Good Samaritan Thrift Store. Okay, it's 501 Lakeside. And so we want you to be able to, when you do your spring cleaning and you're getting rid of some of that, what you consider to be old stuff, we don't want a bunch of just old wreck stuff. We want some nice stuff that we can sell to help sponsor. Let me tell you something. In the last three months, 60% of the people, almost 60% of the people that have come in here have been sponsored, okay, to come in here. And at $3,000 a pop, they're here for four months, okay? And so you can't even have an apartment for that, okay? And so they're taken care of, they're fed, they go through all of their classes, they get through, they receive Christ as their Lord and Savior. Is that not worth it? Okay. So what I would ask is if you please, just when you come, up, come upon something that you just don't need in your house, but it still is nice, would you just take it down there and give it to Nancy to help us sponsor some other people to come in? We always want to go after souls. That's what it's all about. So praise the Lord. Okay, we have some people that are graduating this morning, and so I'm going to introduce them, and then I want them to bring their families up there with them, and then I want them to do nothing but tell you about how good God is. Amen? I want Richard and Jacob to come on up and bring your families. <laughs> families, come on up with them. They can stand right by them. Good to see you, Zach. How long have you been in our body, Zach? 10 years now. On and off. Zach has been here for about 10 years, man. And I'll tell you, he's, he's a good man of God. And I just want you guys to know him, okay? And I want him to know you. He's a little bit shy, so. <laughs> You're married, John. Wrong church. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Which one of you want to go first? I love you, man. I love you too. All about Jesus. Yep. And then introduce who's, who you got with you. So I have my uh, fiance, Crystal. Woo. She supported me through all of this. She's been there. Thank you for coming. And that's her best friend, Tasha, behind her. She's been there her since I've been gone. Bless you guys. But then these are all my brothers and sisters. <laughs> been through here. So, uh, <clears throat> so I'll begin. So, like, uh, I'll just open up in prayer. That's all right. So, dear Heavenly Father, I just thank you for today. I just thank you for everything you've done in my life. I just, uh, 
Um, you're an awesome. I give you all the praise, Lord. Um, I just pray that you uh, bless my testimony, and I just uh, pray that it touches each and every one of these people's hearts in here. And I say this in your beautiful name. Amen. Amen. So I came into the ranch on April 15th, and uh, the very next day we had God time, and uh, that's when I fully gave my heart to lo- or gave my heart to the, to the Lord. Amen. And it was a very humbling experience. Um, I started crying. It was awesome. And um, and after that, the Lord just put visions in my head of everything He's blessed me with. You know, He's blessed me with with a beautiful fiance. You know, that's going to stand by my side for the rest of my life. You know, and I'm going to have my first kid. She's pregnant, and and it, and it's a blessing. He's blessed me. You know, so um, this 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 program saved my life because I've done I've been in and out of jail since I was 12. I've been. I've been done three riders and nothing's worked. You know what I mean? I just kept getting out doing the same thing over and over and over again. Yep. And uh, finally, you know, what, what works is God. You know what I mean? He's changed right. my life and my so heart. You know works. what I mean? My heart's changed. He's filled me with so much love that, that, I, that I've never had in my life before. And um, yeah, he's awesome. He's an awesome God. And yep. um, I just thank everybody. You know, I thank you for your program. I thank all my facilitators, everybody, all my brothers that's been there for me. Babe, I love you. You're my everything. I'm glad, I'm, I'm glad you're here. You stood by me. You know? I love you, Richie. Richie, me and Richie wrote this out, the whole thing together for, from the first day. Cool. You know, so he's my brother for life. And, and then I guess, like, the best thing I could say is, like, to the new guys, man, you guys just, you guys just got to hang in there. You know, I know it gets hard. You know, the first two weeks are the hardest, but it gets easier. You know? Just, just be honest with it and, and give everything to God. But thank you. Praise the Lord. <laughs> now, I got, some, I got some questions. When are you going to marry her? I'm going to marry her when we get out. Right when you get out? <laughs> yeah. We have time right now. Who's going to marry you? I mean, are, do you want to marry this guy? Absolutely. <laughs> what do you like about him? Everything. He's a godly man. Amen. He's a godly man. You hear that? Yeah. When's the last time you heard that? Never. <laughs> he said, I, I haven't heard that one before. That's good. You know what? We want to be here for the both of you. Okay? And you got a lot of staff. You got, you got Stephen. You got John. You got Danny. You got me. But, but get married. Love on the Lord. Be in love with Jesus. So start this out absolutely perfect in Christ. Amen? Amen. Amen. I love you both. I love you. Thank you. Bless you, buddy. Are you ready? All about Jesus. All about Jesus. Here you go, man. Yeah. You got such a tender heart, and I love you so much for that. <laughs> yeah, he's a good guy. Praise God. Uh, I want to first start off with just a prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord God, we just glorify you. We praise you, Lord. We thank you for your love and your grace, Father God. And Lord, I just thank you for this church you've placed me at, Father God. And Lord, I just ask that your blessing just be upon him and continue to flow for your glory and purpose, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Amen. So I'm super excited what God's been doing in my life because he is real. I'm going to start off with one of my favorite scriptures. It's John 10.10. It says, The thief cometh not but for to, to steal, to kill, and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. I truly experience how the devil tries to crush you and kill you. I, I first gave my heart to the Lord in February of 99. And uh, my spiritual parents, they're watching right now. I love you guys. It's Steve and Heather Coy. Cool. If it wasn't for them showing their light upon me, I wouldn't be here right now. I, in 2005 of uh, May, uh, I found myself in prison. And I remember I was just there, and, and it was just, it's just a nightmare because they started me off in California, then Oregon. I was going through the federal systems. And I just couldn't figure out how I ended up there. And I found myself on, the, on my knees. I was in, in uh, the hole, and I was crying out to God, and I was asking him, Lord, help me. I didn't even know what to even say or to pray about or do. And I just said, Lord, please help me. Forgive me. And I knew that I, I sinned, and I was just living that life. And my spiritual parents, every three months, since that time, were going to see me in prison. From Canada. From Canada. And, uh, and that's why, like, 
as time was going and I ended up in Idaho to finish off my, my time, I ended up in Orfino. And uh, that's when uh, Pastor Tim and I had been praying to God to help me get closer up here because they live in Canada. I wanted to be as close as I could to them. And uh, Pastor Tim, oh, thank you, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Pastor Tim and John, <laughs> they came up to the prison and uh, they spoke and, and uh, he shared about how he, he uh, uh, got shot and everything. And, and then uh, afterwards, I just felt led to ask him what type of uh, program they had or transitional or anything, because I was looking at like different halfway houses that come up this way. And, and uh, he had told me, oh, we got a perfect uh, or a great parole plan is what he told me. <laughs> I don't know if you remember that. <laughs> so I was like, all right. And so I called my spiritual parents and I told them about uh, Pastor Tim, and then the next call, I called him, and they said, hey, we went and worship with the altar. <laughs> that's just the type of people they are. They came and worship, and they said, it's great, and then that's when uh, uh, some of you guys might know these guys, Larry Pinkunas, Nick Young, Roman Gordeev, wow. uh, uh, Rich Haynes, all these guys. I went and asked them. I was like, hey, tell me about this ranch. Tell me about it, and they're all, you're going to spend two months with the Lord. It's great. And so if you heard from the beginning in 2005 is when I came to prison and I just got out April uh, 14th and Adela, man, she's a rock here. She is a rock. Yeah, I love you, man. And she helped me. Her, MJ, they just helped me. It was so smooth. And uh, through it all, yes, I've, I've lost a lot. I've been hurt, whatever. But God is so faithful that he restores, he heals. And one of the things, and it's, it's, it's pretty uh, crazy, the last scripture I got to memorize, and I'm memorizing it, Joe Daniel. It's, uh, <laughs> it says, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And what God has done is he set me in this place and I felt like I needed to give my first fruits to the Lord and just go spend time with them. And the ranch, when I, I'm going to tell you, I have kids and they're already grown and I hadn't seen them in seven years. And when I walked out the gates, they're there. It was, I was crying like a big baby. It was, yeah, God restores. And it was just, as soon as I started walking, I just started like, filling my body, and I just cried, and, and I just seen God restoring, and uh, Adela, of course, worked it where I could have a night before I went into the ranch, and, and I spent it with my, my kids, and it was just like nothing had changed. It was so natural just being there with them, and it was beautiful, but that's what God does, and so the enemy, he does try to destroy, but God is more greater than him. He will never be the overcomer. If you truly believe in who Christ is and full-heartedly serve him, he is going to give you that abundant life. And even in any circumstance, he's going to be there to be able to give you the guidance right and put you in a body that's going to help you. Best. And everybody here, Nancy's coming to pick me up tomorrow. <laughs> and, you know, I, I get a... Hey, be praying for me, too, because I got to go get my license, and she arranged it all, so. <laughs> I haven't drove in 15 years, so it's going to be. <laughs> Stay off the streets tomorrow. <laughs> so be praying for me, but all the facilitators at the ranch, Zag, Zag, all my brothers, Joe Daniel, I love you, man. It's just, it's been great. All my brothers I've been experiencing the ranch with, it is powerful, it is true, and Everybody that supports this program, God is going to bless you because that's how faithful our God is. He is faithful and he will bless you and he'll continue. Cindy, I love your class. I really do. I just <laughs> I love your class. But I just I just want to give God all the glory of what he's doing and again, I I'm so thankful of what he's done. God bless you. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You know, they came down from Canada, uh, Steve did, and, he, and, and uh, he said, there's a guy in Orfino, he says, and uh, he knows about your program, and he wants in, he says, is there any way, that this guy's been visiting him all the time, 
from Canada, okay, for 15 years. And I'll tell you, that's faithfulness. You do have a mom and dad in Christ that the Lord gave you, and the Lord has restored you for your obedience. You started in prison, and you gave your life to Jesus. And you could have went out to, to anything, but you said, no, this is where I want to go. This is what I want to do. Because after 15 years, I just don't want to just jump right back into, okay, they didn't have smartphones then, you know what I mean? So, oh, yeah. So God bless you, and I love you so much, and you guys are going to rock. And I'll tell you, my son-in-law, uh, Michael, he said, you know what? He said, these, these are going to be friends of mine. Amen. And so I pray that you guys will, will just re always remain friends. Some of the best friendships that are ever made are made here. I have literally married and okay, gave people that have been through the ranch. 30, you were 31, weren't you? What, what number were you? 30 or 31. When he got married, it was 30 or 31 couples that literally graduated the ranch together. I haven't counted in a little bit. And so that's 60 different people that have graduated the ranch that literally found their person in Christ right here. Isn't that cool? John Padula did. Okay. Stephen did. And, uh, and so, man, God, God has been just outrageously good here. And so the Lord has totally restored you guys, okay? If you do it right from here on, okay, then God has you, and you won't, you won't have to worry. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Zach, you want to pray for them today, man? You guys, come on forward. Congregation, stand with us, if you would. <clears throat> Thank you, Jesus. Okay. Father in heaven, I just thank you so much for Jacob and Richie mm -hmm. and the work that you have begun in their lives. God, I can honestly say that both of them are walking with you and they desire to live a life you, of uh, integrity and righteousness with you, God. And I pray that you would come alongside them, mm -hmm. give them the strength to yep. do that. Yep. I pray that they would know that it has to be the narrow path and that it has to be no compromise. And that's the only way that any of us will truly make it is to be 100% sold out for you. So God, just you, place your protection over the top of them. Yes. And as they walk out these doors, may they just be the light and the darkness of this yes, world. Jesus. May they shine bright for you. you In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Okay.